What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. Today's video is going to be on minimum surface intervals, no decompression limits, and why there's a discrepancy between the dive training agency's tables and different gear manufacturers' computers as well, as far as when you're trying to plan a dive and how long you actually have at a given depth. Now, the reason I want to make this video is in short, I have an email request here from a John B. He's one of our viewers. And basically he says he's making a series of dives to 20 feet for 20 minutes and he needs help finding his minimum surface interval. Now the procedure that he's using to find the minimum surface interval is actually spot on. He's actually using the, the correct pathway or the procedure to find it. However, using his set of tables, there is no minimum surface interval between these two dives. Now in short, his instructor went on to tell him that uh, he didn't need to worry about it because at that depth, that amount of time, we would never oversaturate ourselves with nitrogen. And in short, his instructor is actually spot on. At a 20 foot depth for 20 minutes, which is what he put in his email, he's never going to oversaturate himself with nitrogen. However, I wanted to take it one step further. So once we do his profile here, we want to look to see what our maximum no decompression limit is at that given depth and see why there's a huge discrepancy. So jumping on John B's problem here, we're going to make a series of two dives to 20 feet for 20 minutes. Once again, I'm going to use his set of tables here that he used in his uh, profile just so that we can be exact with him. And so for 20 feet for 20 minutes, if you don't know how to do minimum surface intervals, it's actually pretty easy to do. Your first dive will be using table one, your second dive will be using table three, uh, and then we'll go to table two and kind of intersect the two to find it. So following along real quick, we're gonna go to 20 feet for 20 minutes, and basically that puts him in pressure group C. Now, since we do have nitrogen that we have on gas, we gotta flip over to table three. The next dive will be 20 minutes for uh, 20 or 20 feet for 20 minutes as well. So following that on the chart as well, it tells me that the beginning pressure group, of course, would be X. And then all I've got to do is flip over to table two, intersect X and C, and very easily I can find a minimum surface interval. But here lies the problem. In this particular profile, our pressure group at the end of the first dive is a lesser value than the pressure group at the beginning of the second dive. And typically speaking, if you own gas nitrogen, you come to the surface for a surface interval, you're going to be off gassing. That means this value would actually decrease, not increase. So on this particular dive, and he's correct, you cannot find a minimum surface interval using the dive tables. It's just virtually impossible to do it because the tables are actually going reverse of what they should or your new, your pressure group is actually going in reverse. You're gaining a value versus losing a value. So let's look at the tables in general and see if there's some fallacies here of why we can't find this. Well, the first thing that I notice is I have to round up. I cannot find a 20 foot depth. So of course I'm going to round up. And the same thing applies to dive time as well. There's no 20 minute bottom time. So I have to round that number up. So in short, the dive table itself is not really exact. And as a matter of fact, we took all the tables that we teach through here and we did a quick comparison here just to see if any of them would actually give me a bottom time. The SSI tables does have a 20 foot rating, but it's an indefinite amount of bottom time, meaning there's no decompression limits. Patty, we just did as well, but the PDIC SEI tables kind of the same way. There was a depth, but there's no, there's no bottom time. It means you can stay indefinitely. The Navy tables are the same way. Now, I even included NAWI on this. I've been reading a lot of comments. We have a lot of NAWI viewers who love our channel, and we really appreciate you watching our channel. But a lot of you guys ask, why don't you ever include the NAWI tables? Well, in short, we don't have a set of NAWI tables. I never train through them. I don't teach for NAWI. Now, I think it's a great agency, but I never got brought up through the ranks, so I've never really had a set of NAWI tables. Well, lo and behold, I went out and purchased a set of NAWI tables. So I will start to include that for all our NAWI viewers. I really appreciate your comments, but I will start to include that as well. And then of course, even a computer as well, everything that you see here, there's not really a time for. Even my dive computer, there is no time limit for 20 feet. As a matter of fact, on my dive computer, I can't even calculate a dive to 20 feet simply because the minimum depth is a 40 foot rating. And so what I did right here is I put the minimum depths that we could calculate on a set of tables. SSI was 20 feet, but once again, there was no, no decompression limit or no maximum allowable bottom time. On the PADI tables, the minimum depth was 35 feet, and it gave me 205 minutes of bottom time. 
On the PDIC SEI, that was a 20 feet, but a no decompression limit of indefinite time. And all the way down, and of course the Nowy tables and my dive computer was of course a 40 foot minimum depth that we had to round up to. So I want to try to understand why there is a big discrepancy here and why there is no straight answer when we're trying to calculate dives. Well, in short, I contacted the Divers Alert Network at Duke University, and this is pretty much what the doctors there told me is, is simply put, none of us are the same. Our body, the physiological makeup of our body is different diver to diver. So when they use these algorithms, and, and, and most of them are very conservative, by the way, and I'll show you at the end of the video what I mean by that. But when they use these algorithms, the variable that changes diver to diver is the diver him or herself. And because we all have different types of tissues in our bodies. We have fast tissues that own gas and or own and off gas nitrogen quicker, and we also have slow tissues. And if we look at diver to diver, none of us are the exact. So that variable that we plug into the equation, us being that variable, is going to be different on every single profile. So we use the rule of averages, if you will, when we're planning dives with dive tables and even dive computers. Well, let's look at these tables in general and let's start at the very beginning. Well, of course, the Navy tables were the beginning. And when Navy tables were developed, they were based more off a symptom-based profile versus a bubble formation profile. And what I mean by that is, is basically they took a series of divers from the Navy, they put them at a certain depth, and they all stayed for a different amount of time. And when one came up and said, okay, I've got some muscle aches or some pain, basically they said, okay, that's the no decompression limits. You can't stay at this depth for that period of time. They did the same thing at the next depth. They took a series of divers, they put them at the next greater depth, if you will, and they all stayed for different times. And when one of them come up and said, okay, I've got pain, they said, okay, you can't stay no longer in this. And that's really how the Navy tables were formed. It was based off symptoms, not really bubble formations. Well, the newer algorithms that our dive computers use and what all these other tables, they're based off bubble formation and not symptoms alone. So that's why there is a discrepancy between the dive tables as far as the agencies are concerned. The other discrepancy comes in is because each agency has a different attorney and there's not a single diving agency out there that's going to release information that say that this is safe for a diver or this is safe unless their attorney verifies it first. With that being said, most training agencies are going to be very, very conservative on the dive tables as well. Now, while speaking with Duke, I asked the same question in regards to dive computers. Why do different manufacturers say, or in the plan stage of their computers, why are there different algorithms? And it's pretty much the exact same answer. In short, the different training or the different gear manufacturers have different attorneys and they all want to keep us safe. So they always use kind of that rule of averages. And so basically in short, dive theory is simply that. Theory is not reality. Theory is there. This is a, a mathematical or scientific model that we use that we do make it more conservative just to keep us safe and to keep us within those limitations. So I wanted to take this one step further and I need to do a quick disclaimer here. Please do not go out and try this at home. Understand I do have the proper training to do this. I want to talk a little bit about recreational scuba technical scuba, and then I'm going to kind of merge the two, and I want to show you what I did just to prove to see if my theory was correct on this. So in recreational scuba, basically what we're doing is we want to go underwater, spend some time, take on a little bit of nitrogen without oversaturation, so that no matter what depth you're at within the recreational limitations, we can come straight up to the surface no faster than a foot every two seconds without any type of stop needed. Now, yes, we do uh, tell students that safety stops are a good habit, however, they are not required. Now, in technical diving or decompression diving, we are purposely putting ourselves into decompression. We are purposely on gassing too much nitrogen for what our body can withstand. But through a process of accelerated decompression by breathing different mixtures of different gases at different depths, we can bring that decompression back out of us or bring that nitrogen back out of us at a reasonable level to the point where at the end of the dive, we are no longer theoretically bent. So I wanted to kind of compare the two. So basically what I did is, and I'm going to use the SSI tables. I took the SSI tables here and I said, okay, at 20 feet, I have basically an unlimited amount of time. So as you can see here, using air 20 feet, I have an unlimited amount of time. Well, I did the exact same thing with my dive computer. If I'll go over to my plan stage, 
I'm gonna go to the shallowest depth I can, which happens to be 40 feet, and it says I've got a bottom time of 99 minutes. Now, once again, that's rounding up, of course, because I'm not be, I won't be going to uh, 40 feet. I'm only gonna be going to 20 feet. But I want to max that out. I want to see what happens, and when I go from 99 minutes to 100 minutes. I want to see if I'm going to go into decompression. Now, if my theory is correct, no, I will not, because if I plan the dive with the tables, I would not go into decompression. However, if I plan it with the computer, theoretically, I should. However, I'm going to say that I'm not going to go into decompression. And furthermore, I want to test this to see exactly what happens to my computer. Will my computer state that I'm in decompression, or will it simply just keep on going. So let's go out to the water, let's jump in, let's see what's going to happen, and then I'll kind of give you some final thoughts on everything as far as your minimum surface interval, your no decompression limits as far as your tables, and how you should be a safe diver while diving. All right, guys, so we're in the water now. We're at a depth of here about 23 feet, and I'm going to average this dive uh, somewhere between, say, the 20 and 25-foot depth. Um, as you can see, I just switched over to 99 minutes being underwater, so I'm on that verge of exceeding my no decompression limit according to what my computer says. However, like what we talked about during the classroom, I don't believe I'm actually going to go into decompression when I cross that 100-minute uh, mark simply because the tables is still going to say that uh, I'm, I'm good to go and remember everything's conservative here the dive computers are more conservative than the tables and the tables are going to more be more conservative on a theoretical side of things compared to reality so as i'm nearer and closer to that hundred minute mark here uh, you can see i'm just simply following a line this is actually a, our local quarry it's not out here in the lake but as i'm coming up the line here i'm going to be right at that 20 to 21 foot mark and then all of a sudden the computer will switch over to 100 minutes and now like i said i personally don't believe that I'll go into decompression but I want to see what my computer will actually read and I'll try to freeze it at the very end of this and show you what I mean about the computer itself not going to decompression there as you can see it just simply switched over to 100 minutes underwater I exceeded the no decompression limit of 99 minutes of my computer I'm at a depth of 20 feet and once again let me freeze frame it here for you and show you exactly what I mean about the computer itself not going into decompression so looking at the computer real quick, I want you to focus on this area here, which is my no decompression limit, this area, which is my actual bottom time, this area over here, which happens to be my nitrogen on gassing, and this area here, which is the alert area, which would tell me that, of course, I was in decompression. Now, as we can clearly see, once again, my no decompression limit according to the computer for a 20-foot dive is 99 minutes. I've exceeded that 99 minutes by at least one minute, so my maximum bottom time or the total amount of time I've spent underwater is exactly 100 minutes. If we look at the bar graph there on the right-hand side, you'll see that I'm nowhere near maxing out the actual amount of nitrogen that I can saturate myself with before the computer actually clicks in. And then there on the left, there's no alarms or alerts tell me that I've actually went into decompression. Thus, once again, proving my theory that the computer itself and any dive computer for that uh, fact is actually going to be more conservative than the tables and actually more conservative than what you would really have to worry about at that depth of 20 feet. Now at any greater depths than this, of course, you would really need to follow your computer. But at a depth of 20 feet, both the tables and the computers have confirmed that we truly have an unlimited amount of bottom time. And the only thing that limits us at that depth is our gas supply and not the saturation of nitrogen. All right, guys, so there you go. As you can see, I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I did not get bent. I did not go into decompression. I was very shocked that my computer did not actually state that I was, even though I knew my body would not be in decompression. I was very shocked that the computer just kept on clicking around. But guys, I want to end this video by simply saying, please stay safe out there. Do not push your limitations. Whatever training agency you learned from, use that particular table to learn on. If you learned through SSI, use their tables. If you learned through PADI, use their tables, and so forth and so on. If you're a NAWI diver, use their tables. If you didn't learn on a set of tables, you learned on a dive computer, then please follow your computer, but still keep it conservative. If we look at the PADI tables and it says you got 205 minutes, First of all, you're probably not going to have the air supply to stay that long, but let's say that you did just like I did in my video. 
Don't push your limitations, guys. Keep it safe. These are theoretical numbers. These are theoretical depths. These, these algorithms are based off the rule of averages. They're not really based off your physiological makeup or my physiological makeup. It's an average of all of us, and we want to stay safe while underwater. John B., I want to give you a huge shout out. I really appreciate your email, and I hope I answered your question. And I agree with your instructor to the point that at that depth, for that amount of time, you're never going to oversaturate yourself. Now, sure, if you were to stay there days in and days in and days in, then sure. I know, I think the maximum amount of time anyone's ever been underwater at that depth, like 10 days is like the world record. Uh, and I, I'm not sure the background there. I'm not sure what gases he was breathing. But once again, from a recreational standpoint, you're not going to oversaturate yourself at 20 feet for 20 minutes. So the minimum surface interval in, in general does not exist. And I hope you can kind of see that, you know, I come up with the same answers that you did. And, and kudos to you. You were actually reading the tables in the proper procedure as well. But thank you again for your email. If you got any more questions, please let me know. And to all our viewers, guys, if you've got questions, please put it down in the, in the comment section below. If you want to keep it discreet, you can send me an email. Our email is just simply lakehickoryscuba at gmail.com. Uh, I do read every email just like I read all our comments as well. So please send me an email if you got a question. And if you don't mind being uh, featured in one of our videos, I'd like to put you in our video as well. But guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit that like button and definitely share it for us. Once again, if you got any questions, comments, or concerns, please put it down in the comment section below. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recover videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.